There is a price to pay for everything you gain. Hey yo, this is TOT coming at you today with another Real Talk episode number two. I have some Heavenly Sword gameplay in the background. I personally enjoyed this game and I had a lot of fun with it. And I will use this as an example later on in this video. Today's topic is going to be DLC and microtransactions. This is my personal viewpoint on these on each of these things. Take it with a grain of salt if they rub you the wrong way. Microtransactions and DLC are both things that we have seen on the PC market for many, many years. With DLC, we have seen this in the form of expansion packs. World of Warcraft and Final Fantasy XIV have both had expansion packs for their games on multiple occasions. Other games have done the same thing. With microtransactions, we have seen this mainly on a free to play market. Now the reason why microtransactions exist here is because free to play games do not have a way of bringing in money naturally. So they have to rely on microtransactions. This is just how it works. Over the past couple of years, DLC and microtransactions have reared their head in the console markets more and more. DLC, there are two factors that I judge DLC on. The first one, did I enjoy the vanilla content of the game? And when I am referring to vanilla content, I am referring to the main content. No DLC, no microtransactions. The second factor that I judge DLC on is the price tag of that DLC. Am I going to get a value out of that DLC that is worth the price tag if I was to compare it to the main vanilla game in a comparison aspect? I'll give an example. I'll give a personal example of something that I did not enjoy the vanilla content of. Final Fantasy 13 2 is a game that I did not enjoy the vanilla content of. A lot of, uh, as a completionist, I normally try to take out the time to kill optional bosses in Final Fantasy games. I didn't have the opportunity to do that with Final Fantasy 13 2 because most of the bosses were put behind a paywall. Yes. So to say the least, I did not enjoy my vanilla content experience with that game. Therefore, I did not purchase a lot of the DLC content with that game. I'll give another example. Street Fighter V. Let's say Street Fighter V came out. A lot of people are looking forward to this game. Let's say hypothetically, this game came out. A few weeks later, people find out there are going to be additional characters added. But these characters won't be for free. They won't be for free. You will be charged to play as each of these characters. Now, how would you feel if there was a character amongst those that you had really wanted to play and had wished was in the vanilla content of the game? If that character had been in the vanilla content of the game, you know that your gameplay experience would have been extended. The longevity of your gameplay would have been extended without having to fork over more money. I'm pretty sure you will feel some type of way. I'm pretty confident you will feel some type of way on that. Some confliction, something, or something. Microtransactions on a console game are utterly gross. Before I get on the wood microtransactions I do want to say with DLC this is a point that I forgot to mention with DLC it varies from company to company from game to game or rather DLC is acceptable for me or not for example Dragon Age Origins I purchased all of the story based DLC for that why the 
the reason why I purchased all of the story-based DLC is because I enjoyed the vanilla content of the game. The story, the combat, the difficulty of the game, I really enjoyed. Despite the game being laggy on the PlayStation 3, I got a massive amount of hours out of the game and the vanilla content alone. Same thing applies with Dragon Age Inquisition. I will eventually buy the story-based DLC for that game for the same reasons why I did for Dragon Age Warriors. So not all DLC is bad. It varies from game to game and from the publishers and developers that are going to be behind that game. Microtransactions on consoles. I, I feel it slipping. I won't watch this anymore! <laughs> a secret we have known before Gohan could even form words in his Why do they even exist? Why do they even exist? Because when I look at it, it looks like a way to milk people for their money. Guys and girls, you are already paying out money for these micro for this game. A game that you probably look forward to. You're already paying out money for it. And the game's going to have microtransactions on top of that? And even if you don't buy into these microtransactions, uh, there's always going to be somebody that will. And this is why this is going to be a problem. Because when pe too many people buy into these DLCs and they buy into microtransactions, they're sending a signal out to companies. They are letting these companies know that, hey, you can get away with this do it again. I'm pretty sure there's a lot of companies that are taking notes from when Destiny has been pulled. Evolve, a game that had came out, tried to pull some bullshit. People weren't having it. A lot of people dropped that game because it was because it was bottled down with microtransactions. People dropped the game. But where Des but where Evolve failed, Destiny is having success. Not only is there the possibility that content was cut from the game and resold to year one players, but on top of that, the game is now incorporating microtransactions. Like what? You can't be serious. People paid a lot of game money to play Destiny. Now there's going to be microtransactions. And you could always say, well, microtransactions aren't that bad. They always start, they, microtransactions normally start off as cosmetic and then they turn into a whole hideous monster that just devours everything. Yeah, I'm referring to pay to win microtransactions. Yeah, you can be as good as you want in a game, but if somebody's willing to fork over more money than what you did, Guess what? That person is probably going to have an advantage over you. Imagine having that type of microtransaction in the Call of Duty series. Do you think that series would be as fun for people? Probably not. Or even if that microtransaction system was in, say, Halo series, do you think it would be as fun? Probably not. The latest Tomb Raider game is boggled down with microtransactions. The latest Guitar Hero Live game is possibly bottled down with microtransactions. There are companies that are following suit with what Destiny is, has gotten away with thus far. People are just blindly buying into it and they're not being very cautious of the dangers of it. And this is something that will continue to get worse and worse and worse. How do you combat this as a person? Well, one thing that you can do is do your research on these games and on the companies. If the game, publisher, and or developer has a track record of DLC, microtransactions, you 
might want to wait to purchase that game. Try not to buy that game day one. Wait for the game to come out. See how much DLC is going to be in the game that you would actually want. And then after some time, when you get a price drop for the game, buy the game, get all of your DLC purchases, and bam. You're back up to the standard value. And you got all of the DLC included in the package. Isn't that awesome? Or, with some titles, you can just wait for a, a Game of the Year edition. That will include all of the DLC and whatnot. That's a way that you can combat that. The second way is to be verbal about it. Let other people know, hey, this, could start a, this will start a wildfire and it will get out of hand. It will get out of control. And it's already starting to take that form now. If it hasn't already where you are seeing this more and more and more. Why am I complaining about it? Very simple. I'm used to the simpler days. I got a game, I took it home, I put it in my console, I had a start, and it had an end. I didn't have to worry about DLC. I didn't have to worry about microtransactions. Heavenly Sword, is one of hundreds I'm not gonna say hundreds one of many games that I have played that is a complete package game the game wasn't trying to pull one over on me I got everything in that game for what I paid for I didn't have to worry about DLC I didn't have to worry about microtransactions I understand that with these companies, they are spending a lot more resources to produce these games. It doesn't matter if it is a triple A, a double A, or an indie title. It doesn't matter what type of project it is. But that does not mean that they should go out of their way and try and milk people in the process of it. What about the integrity of things? What about the morality of things? I understand everybody needs to make their money so they can keep a roof over their head. But what about the core fundamentals of it? I get it. Gaming is a business. I get it. They need to make money. But at what cost is that going to come? Why should that have to come at the expense of my entertainment or another person's entertainment? I don't think it should be like that. I would hate to imagine the day and fear the day that would come to where I went out and I purchased a game and I only get half of the game. And if I wanted to play the rest of the game, I was going to have to use buy a combination of DLC and microtransactions. That is going to be a very scary time for me as a console gamer. Now, for those of you out there who have no problems with buying all of the DLC and all of the microtransactions, I ask you to be a little bit more cautious. I ask you to do your research before you blindly buy into these things. That's all I can really ask. Because otherwise, this is going to get out of control eventually. I don't know how long it'll take, but they'll keep pushing it a little bit more, and a little bit more, and a little bit more, until the gaming state is in shambles. I hope it doesn't get to that point, but we as a whole have to speak up about the topic. Individually, we can't do much, but together, we can get a lot of stuff accomplished. We can get a lot of stuff accomplished. Anyways, this is TOT. I want to say thank you for listening, and you be safe out there. Doses.
And let the rage of Sparta fuel your brain. Papa need brand new shoes, but what the fuck can a nigga do? My little boy gotta eat too, so I must I suck a fella just to live large like Rockefeller. Ow, ow, and did you ever stop to think I'm old enough to go to war, but I ain't old enough to drink? Cops wanna hit me with the book, <laughs> and you're hooked on my I don't give a fuck look. Make your rules, I'ma break 'em. No matter how much you make 'em, you show me bacon, I'ma take 'em.